Hi everyone, this is Joe Zam bringing you another video for what's another fun project that I did recently using Node.js. This one has two things about it that make it fun web sockets and Minecraft. First, I'll show you a demo of the little app that I made. So here's the starting interface, which you will see if you connect uh, using my Apache server. And you can click this button to actually run a PHP script to start up the node server that I need in order to run this application. I'm actually going to use this because it's a little cleaner. And then I can see the window. So we'll just refresh. And here we go. Here's the main interface for starting different Minecraft servers. Um, so I have six different Minecraft servers on my computer and you can click on any one of these to start it up. So we'll start this one up. And it even brings up the Minecraft server console. You can use this to type in anything, uh, any command that you would normally give to a Minecraft server and it will show up with all the output. So you can use this to kick people off or whatever. Um, and you can type in stop here or you can click this stop button right here and it will stop the server bring it back to this interface so you can start up a different one. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I have several friends who are located all over the place that like to play Minecraft and we like to use my computer to run the server because it's the fastest. So all I need to do is keep logging and Hamaji up so they can connect to my PC directly, plug in the IP address up here with a slash Minecraft and then click that start servers button and they'll be able to play on whatever servers they want without me having to do anything except have my computer on and Hamachi running. Eventually I'll even add a button right here that will allow them to add servers to this list. So create servers on my computer. Um, so hopefully they wouldn't, won't abuse that and load my computer up with 50 different servers. Anyway, enough about that. Let's take a look at the code, why don't we? So, there's two main technologies involved in this. The first one is child processes. Um, what this is, right here, we're just spawning a child process um, using Java with all these arguments running in this current working directory, which is the directory that all my servers are in. So, it just spawns a uh, server process and then from there all we have to do is sit up right here and set it up so that anytime there is any output from the server process it'll send it uh, emit it to my front end application so that's all there is to it you just set it up to to monitor the child process and it will take care of it from there um, then, the other main thing is sockets. For this, I'm or web sockets. So for this, I'm using socket.io. So it just allows people to connect to this, and then anything, anytime there's something happens on the server, it'll push it straight to the browser, and I can push from the browser straight to the server back and forth. That's one of the great things about web sockets is it keeps a connection open seemingly keeps a connection open to uh, allow you back and forth communications at any time. So let's take a little walk through here. So first we get on connection. Um, so anytime a client connects to sockets on the server it'll start running this function. All this does is set up a bunch of listeners so socket.on. So whenever the client emits uh, get server list we will emit the server list back to them the server list is just a server's um, object literal that is stored in the server's variable and that's just right here this is just a little uh, configuration so I have a short ID that relates to the folder name where I keep the jar file for starting the server. Uh, then I have another variable which is just server which is the currently running server. It starts out as null. 
Then there's MC server, which is uh, the instance of the running server, uh, the process that we saw down here. Um, also, we listen for get status. Whenever they say get status, we send them the status, which just sends the server variable. So if they get null back, they know there's no service connected. Otherwise, they'll get a string that is the key for the server. Um, now, whenever we hit start server, there's a lot more going on. So, first we check to see if there's already a server started. That's what this is. And here we check to see if there's a server with that name that exists. If that happens, then we emit fail to the client side. Um, I haven't set it up yet, but anytime there's a fail, I'm going to have a little notification pop up that says, hey, you did a command that didn't work. Uh, so. If we get past that, then we set the server to the name that they passed in. Then we try to spawn the process using the specific server folder name. Um, and as soon as that's done, we'll emit the status of the server. So we'll tell the client that the server is running. So we're just monitoring the um, output of the server and sending that data back to the client using emit console and then anytime the server exits we let or we set these both to null and let the client know that there's no longer a server connected then this is command this is um, anytime a client types in a command in the console it comes back here so first we'll emit back to the user player command um, the command name so that it'll show up in the console so that whoever is like no matter how many people are connected so you can have multiple people connected to this um, application at the same time and it'll update all of them at the same time so everybody will know when someone emits, uh, clicks on a player command and then we uh, send the command to the Minecraft server. And that is all there is to it. Um, I'm going to be going through this, uh, creating better, more and better comments in this, and creating slight little additions and stuff. And when I'm done with that, I'll throw it up on GitHub. And hopefully, you guys will enjoy this. God bless and happy coding.